Holy crap, what an attack. Oh, so good. What's up guys, if you'd like to support our content and pick up this month's amazing proxy rewards, please check out our Patreon page at patreon.com slash it resolves. What's going on guys and welcome to today's deck list. We are jumping into just some normal gameplay in between challenge days and uh, we're, we're going to be playing historic. We're going to try some fun stuff out here. Standard got a little stale for me, so I thought, you know what? We'll jump into Historic, see what's going on there. Uh, and there's a lot. Uh, this is a tried and true classic deck that we're gonna talk about in just a second. Before we do, I just wanna remind you, please check out our Modern Horizons 2 giveaway. If you are not already entered to do that, there are five places that you can enter to win a free Modern Horizons bundle. The winner will be announced on the 25th of June. You can check out our website for details, aresolvesmtg.com. There's a whole article there. You can uh, jump to the links, do all that kind of stuff. So without further ado, let's check out this list. So. This is a transmogrify list. Uh, if you don't know what that card is, it's a really fantastic card. Essentially, uh, at sorcery speed, you exile target creature. That creature's controller reveals cards from the top of their deck until they reveal a creature card and then puts that onto the battlefield, shuffling their deck afterwards. It's a very simple process with this list. The idea is you get a token out, you transmogrify it into something big. And in this case, we have what is honestly my favorite creature, Elishnorn, uh, Grand Cenobite. Absolutely amazing card. 4-7 for 7 mana. I know I'm kind of hiding it here, but Vigilance. Other creatures you control get plus 2, plus 2, which because we are a token deck should be pretty easy to buff up our team and get some powerhouse stuff on the field uh but not only that creatures our opponents control get minus two minus two uh which is pretty good if we're gonna be honest that really takes the cake so uh this list is all about kind of pulling off that combo so you'll notice in the early turns of the game we've got a lot of token producers legions landing satyr's cunning forbidden friendship dragon fodder raise the alarm we've got intangible virtue here as a way to buff up all of our tokens and give them vigilance which is also quite big uh history of banalia is a three of here to be able to pump out some tokens this is a really surefire way to be able to get transmogrify off on turn four if you can get history of banalia down turn three you're automatically going to get a token on the beginning of the next turn uh as well which just kind of makes it a little easier uh, like I said, Transmogrify, of course, is a four of. We've got Heroic Reinforcements uh, as a four of as well, which is a really powerful spell. This does a lot. So not only does it pump out some tokens, it also buffs everything and gives everything haste, which honestly we couldn't be happier for. Uh, we, of course, have Luca in here as just a one of. This is a bit of a slower Transmogrify, but that minus two essentially uh, gives you that exact same ability, which is fantastic. Uh, and then Lorehold Command, uh, again, as a way to kind of finish things off, give you a little bit of flexibility with some some different kind of abilities and things like that, which is great. Uh, the, the land spread here is a pretty basic one. We do have 24 lands, so nothing too crazy there. Castle Ardenvale is in here as well as Castle Embrith to give us a little bit of tech, but for the most part, it's pretty straightforward for Historic. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into game one. All right, guys, here we are for game one, and this is not a very good hand. So we're going to go ahead and throw this one back. And this is a much better keep. It's not perfect, but we do have the legions landing. So we're going to hold on to that. I'm just going to throw this uh, lore hold command back. So let's go ahead. Let's get that turn one landing down. Just so you guys know, we are going to be taking this through three best of one games. And that's it. We're going to be pretty straightforward with it. If it goes short, it goes short. Uh, but we'll see how it goes. Overall, uh, I just kind of wanted to test out some stuff. We've had a lot of uh, interesting decks lately, uh, thanks to the uh, the little historic challenge that we have had going on. Uh, and I've really enjoyed that. So I hope you guys have too. But this is just a chill, little bit of historic gameplay. Nothing crazy kind of day. Uh, fortunately, we don't have a creature card in our hand. Another good thing about this list is because we only actually run two creatures, it's kind of nice because to be honest, it's not that hard to uh, avoid things like the Valky plays and things like that. So uh, I'm actually going to go ahead and play this other Legion's Landing. This gets a third creature out, which crucially means we can flip a Legion's Landing next turn uh, and hopefully, hopefully uh, be able to get that fourth land so we can play this Heroic Reinforcements. Happy to attack in here, though, honestly. Uh, if they want to trade the Valky, that is fine. Um, cool. Cool. Uh, that just gets us a little bit further down the road. Honestly, though, that may have been a bad attack. Uh, the the reality is we do want to get to that three, so maybe that was a bit aggressive, but, you know, it's okay. We've got the satyrs cunning in the graveyard that we might be able to uh, to escape back at some point here. 
There's another Satyr's Cunning. We're going to go ahead and run that one out uh, and attack a little bit. So we are punching through a good bit of damage in these first few turns. Ideally, we'd get a tra Transmogrify at this draw uh, because essentially that just means we should be able to, to really do some damage this upcoming turn. Um, We've got the Narset, that's fine. It's not the end of the world for us. We do have to worry about, uh, ooh, there we go. All right, so uh, unfortunately that does come into play tapped, but uh, I think what we're gonna do is just uh, punch out as many of these little Satyr's Cunnings as we can. Essentially, this just ensures that this heroic reinforcements next turn is gonna do as much damage as possible. So let's go ahead and get rid of this Narset. It's gonna flip the Adanto. Uh, which is great. Unfortunately, these are sorcery speed. We couldn't have instant speed uh, played those, so I think it makes sense that we did that then. Uh, what did they throw out? Uh, a Will and a Rowan. Okay. Interesting. Um, curious to see how this goes. They've got Languish, and that does suck, but it's really not the end of the world for us. We've got ways to kind of pump out some tokens here, uh, so I'm actually just going to throw a re Heroic Reinforcements in and get an attack in. This keeps the damage race going forward. Uh, it also means that the second heroic reinforcements is going to be even better uh, unless they can uh, get another sweeper or something along those lines out, which they may not. Uh, and this, they can Blood Chief's Thirst. I'm interested to see if they do. They do not. Very good. Very, very good. Okay, so uh, let's see how this goes. I'm going to Dragon Fodder first. Uh, perfect. And then we're we're gonna just spit one of these guys out. They've got the the uh, counter up. This kind of gets around that counter, uh, to be honest. Uh, I think we do attack the Narset. This just makes sure that they can't uh push through a little extra damage. They've got a yeah, sure. That's perfectly fine. Uh, that still means that they have to kill their own Narset if they do want to activate the ability, uh, which is great for us because it just means we don't really have to deal with them pulling out more and more cards. Ooh, Ritual of Soot is very good, but again, we've got recoverability here, which is fantastic. This Castle Ardenvale plus the Adanto uh, really makes it easy for us to kind of build back up very, very quickly here. Um, they do not have a counter spell up, so I'm going to go ahead and take the opportunity to play the heroic reinforcements and get that attack in. This just ensures that no matter what, we've got the plays out of there, uh, which is fantastic. And let's go ahead and play that Satyr's Cunning. Keep the damage race going. They are down to eight, which isn't bad. Uh, we've got some work to do for sure, but my guess, at least at this point, is that they do not have a follow-up sweeper. That is my hope. We'll see, of course, but, um... That seems to be the case. I think they wouldn't have, uh, or, or I think they would have played it sooner if they could have. They did play that Ritual of Slip, but they drew it off of the uh, Narset. There we go. So this confirms it, in my opinion. Uh, the fact that they played a one-off kill spell versus any kind of sweeper just gives you that opportunity um, to, to take that uh, into account. So do read the opponent as you go through. Environmental Sciences, sure. Get it on out there. Not a problem, they get a land if they'd like it. Perfect. All right, so we are just hitting all the lands in the world, which isn't actually the uh, a, a terrible thing for us, uh, though it could obviously be better. Let's go ahead and spit this out and get another attack in, down to eight again, uh, and see what we can do. Crucially, they have not done all that much in this game. There's the Ugin, though. That's gonna do quite a bit. Uh, <laughs> very scary. Uh, and good to know, because really we should have done things slightly differently here. Um, interesting. So this could trade with the Ugin. Uh, I do think we take the opportunity to play it. Essentially what they have the opportunity to do is minus seven the Ugin to deal with the Elishnorn, uh, which is very, very good. Or they can just Blood Chief's Thirst. It makes a lot more sense, but I think we kind of had to run that out there. Uh, and we'll see what they want to do. Huh. Okay. Hmm. So they do have a counter up, uh, which isn't great for us. Uh, we can play the Satyr's Cunning, which isn't great either. Um, but I think we do that and then wait and spit out one of our tokens at the end of their turn. 
Uh, that ensures that it sticks and we can have transmogrify up. This is very dependent on whatever they have on their turn. But I think uh, despite some misplays, I think we've done exactly what we should do. Um, I think we could have done a little better here and there, though. Uh, wow, they've got Nikki B. All right, so yeah, they pretty much have the game, I think, at this point. Um, let's see, what could they do? They could do a lot. Uh, so if they exile two cards from our hand, that's Transmogrify gone, uh, which just means we are kind of out of luck there. Okay. Uh, let's go ahead. Let's spit out a token. Um, there's a Castle Embreath, which isn't great, uh, and they, they can just counter this, um, but I think we just have to go for it. They're going to counter it, and then we are pretty much in the exact same place with an Alted Ugin on the opposing side with a Nickel Bolas in hand. I think we can go ahead and safely concede this game. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and concede this one. We're going to go ahead and jump into game two. Remember, we're going to play three games with this. Hopefully, we can see this in action. All right, guys, here we are for game number two, and honestly, I kind of like this hand. Uh, it's not perfect, but it does give us a nice uh, two into three play uh, with a heroic reinforcements here at the top as well. So what we can do is go ahead and play this out tapped. We've got Inspiring Vantage that can come out next turn. Uh, give us that untapped land to allow us to raise the alarm or uh, Dragon Fodder. And we, oh, there's the Transmogrify as well. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to wait and see what they do. We can raise the alarm and trade with the Lanwar Elves if they just don't have anything. Uh, chances are, given this is Elves, they're going to tap it for mana here. Oh, maybe not. Maybe not. Okay, this might be great for us then. Uh, because, again, any amount of mana advantage that we can gain on a deck like this is going to be huge. It's going to keep them off of their bigger spells, which obviously is the goal for us. So uh, let's go ahead and throw this out there. Let's cast the History of Benalia. It's going to give us a little one or a two two, excuse me. And I am actually going to attack in here. Really doubtful they would ever block, um, to be honest. And one damage isn't great, but it's one damage. And we should take every opportunity I think we can. Got a Jade Light Ranger uh, off the top, which is pretty good, but Crucially, if we can transmogrify, we are going to be in a crazy good position because they are really not going to have a whole lot on the field. Um, wow, there's Galta. Okay, so we do want to get that transmogrify down more than anything right now. Sweep that board. Oh, no, we didn't do it. We didn't do it. And that's okay, uh, but it also kind of sucks. Uh, all right, so let's go ahead and Legion's Landing. Let's get that out there. Let's Dragon Fodder. Get that out there. Uh, do we attack? I think we do. They're, again, most likely not going to trade here. They want to get that Galta down as as quickly as they possibly can. Oh, they do. Okay, fair enough. Um, That's honestly fine for us. They're not going to have much removal unless they have fight spells. There's the 1010, which is very good. Uh, but again, ooh, there we go. Okay, so this is fantastic. Um, So let's go ahead and do this. We're gonna kill this. This will get Elishorn down and sweep most, a lot of their board, not most of their board, but quite a bit of it. Uh, now the question becomes, how do we get the maximum amount of damage in that we possibly can? Uh, they're gonna deal eight to us next turn. I think we honestly just kind of attack with everything and get as much as we can in. This also gives us the, uh, the Adanto, which just means that we could potentially start just free blocking a lot the the galta is the problem we do have to outpace a galta which i don't know that we can do uh to be brutally honest but we're gonna try we're gonna try um so can we do this is the question this is going to be our best bet it's going to produce the most amount of damage and the most amount of uh heat here and then yeah i think we can just attack in with everything and that should be good uh yeah that's fine, but we still get enough damage in, and guys, that's how the deck is meant to work. What a great uh, uh, game. That was fantastic. Let's go ahead and see what game three has in store for us. 
All right, guys, here we are for game number three. This is not a great hand, if I'm honest. Uh, land situation is great. We've also got the heroic reinforcements and the transmogrify. I think in this case, I'm going to give it a shot with not a lot of hope, uh, if I'm going to be honest, but we'll see how it goes. We got this. No worries. Thankfully, starting off with a Fable Passage, which just means no turn one play from the opponent. Uh, blue is a little scary, but... It's okay, Heroic, or Raise the Alarm, excuse me, is not a bad draw just because it does allow us to uh, play some stuff on the opposing uh, player's turn if need be. Let's go ahead and play that Inspiring Vantage. And this is the fun part about Raise the Alarm is because it's at instant speed, you're able to block. Uh, like if they decide to throw in with the Lotus Cobra here, we actually have a block to, to kind of get around that. Uh, opponent really doing a great job though of ramping here. Uh, so let's see what they do. They are gonna attack in. Let's go ahead and throw out that raise the alarm and hope that this actually hits. They could have had negate there, but they did not, thankfully. Uh, let's go ahead and block one of the with one of the uh, tokens. Crucially, they could have also had brazen borrower, so there is a consideration to um, to actually block with both. But I'm glad we did not, honestly. Um, all right, so we throw this out there. We forbidden friendship. She's going to give us a couple extra tokens here, and then we go ahead and attack in with both, uh, I think is the very clear play. They can obviously do something here, but it looks like just Gross Spiral, and they are out of luck on these lands, guys. They are just not getting there, uh, which is interesting given what deck this is. Uh, but next turn, we've got Transmogrify, and this is probably going to be the, the turn, guys. I think we can do this. Let's see. Come on, let's do it. Let's do it. Uh, let's go ahead and throw that pathway land out there. Let's do it, guys. Let's transmogrify. Taking this into account. Ooh, we did it. We did it. All right. Okay. Let's uh, let's get an attack in. Boom. Elishnorn is just my favorite creature. Absolutely love Elishnorn. Oh, so good. So good. All right, so they have a 1-1, one, one, uh, which is not great for them. Uh, let's Legion's Landing. This is going to do, this is going to be a crazy good turn. So we Heroic Reinforcements, get everything in, and we just attack them. What an attack! Holy crap, what an attack. Oh, so good. So this is the win. We did it. Go us. Hmm. There it is, guys. So let's go ahead and jump into a quick summary of how this went. All right, guys, so let's talk about this deck. Just really briefly, uh, I do want to throw out that part of the reason I did choose this list and uh, kind of put this one together is because I just absolutely love Elishorn. I also love the Transmogrify combo. It's just a really fun one, to be honest. Uh, and to, to see it kind of come to fruition and actually work is, is pretty awesome, in my opinion. So I really hope you guys enjoyed this. Do I think this deck is really that good? I think in the early laddering stages, it's okay. It can kind of sneak out some wins. It has a little bit of tech with that instant speed raise the alarm, uh, which I think does a lot against a lot of the decks in historic right now. Uh, we saw it do pretty well against like a Lanoir elf where they decided not to ramp and instead attack in. That's a dangerous play when you've got to raise the alarm in hand because it does allow you that opportunity to just trade blocks. Uh, and honestly, a 1-1 one -one in your deck is pretty expendable given the fact that you've got so many of them available. So uh, I would say it has a decent play on best of one ladder. It's not great, I don't think, in the long term. There are a lot of other decks in general that are going to outpace it. Obviously, Elves is going to be a tricky one. You can do a lot of damage, so against the life gain deck, you may or may not be able to kind of swing a win. Uh, it really depends on if you can get that Elish Norn down to deal with things like the Soul Warden before it can get a lot of counters on it with maybe Heliod or something along those lines. So regardless, this has been a really fun deck. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Please, again, make sure to check out the giveaway that Modern Horizons 2 giveaway is going on right now until June. June 25th there are five ways to enter so please do check out our website so you can get all the information there it is in the articles page uh and just at the bottom of the home page if you're interested but guys thank you so much for watching i really do appreciate it and i can't wait to see you in the next gameplay video i'll see you guys then